And now, it's time for Southern California's Sports Fishing Voice. Let's talk hookup. For the next two hours, join Pete Gray, rock cod Rick Maxa, and this week's special expert guest for fishing information, new techniques to catch more fish, and the most current scoop on what's happening in the water. Let's Talk Hookup is sponsored in part by Yamaha Outboards. Reliability starts here. By Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup. And Shimano Rods and Reels. Fish with the best. Shimano. Get ready for the fastest two hours on radio with the hosts of Let's Talk Hookup, Pete Gray and Rock Cod Rick Maxa. Good morning, anglers, and welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. I'm Pete Gray with Rock Cod Rick Maxa in the Mighty 1090 Studios. We have the guys from Dana War Sport Fishing. We have the big guy, Don Hansen and Brian Woolley from Dana Wharf going to be talking some fishing, and they are like the focal point of Southern California fishing right now. And we're going to tell you all about it. Stay tuned. Southern California's sport fishing voice is Let's Talk Hook Up on the Mighty 10 Night. The new Shimano Torium HG is here, and you'll be able to experience this fantastic reel now at your local Shimano dealer. The new Torium is up to 30% smaller than the previous generation, but still has the same line capacity. The smaller S compact body design and one-piece die-cast aluminum frame provides more rigidity and lighter weight. Torium now has EI surface treatment and is tested up to 700 times the corrosion resistance of past models. The new Shimano Torium HG is not only better on the outside, the inside is amazing with a cross carbon drag providing up to 24 pounds of drag pressure from a star drag reel. It has a sealed roller clutch and 6.2 to 1 brass gears. The machined aluminum handle has a larger knob to make it easy to crank in the big fish. The new lightweight aluminum spool gives you better casting and control. Available in three sizes, the Torium HG is the next evolution in compact, rigid, and powerful saltwater star drag reels. Get it now at your local Shimano dealers. Great boats, free parking, and a fully stocked tackle shop. Just a few of the reasons Seaforth Sport Fishing is a favorite among anglers. Come aboard top charter boats like the Aztec, Cortez, Endeavor, Eclipse, Apollo, Outer Limits, Pacific Star, El Gato Dos, Alexis, Pride, Privateer, Tribute, Pacific Voyager, and the Voyager. Plus, the new Seaforth Sea Watch in San Diego offer the finest half, three quarter, and full day trips available. Check out the full service tackle store at Seaforth Sport Fishing, and it's all run by fishermen for fishermen 1717 Quivera Road just off Mission Bay Drive in Mission Bay book online at seaforthlanding.com my angler H2O I will scent my lure with pride and hope my boss doesn't notice the tan I will outmaneuver drought exposed sunken boats and outlast the hard fighting largemouth bass I will save water at home for better fishing out here and always Always wear my life jacket. What's your H2O? Tell us at BoatCalifornia.com. The California State Parks Division of Boating and Waterways reminds you to wear it, California. Summer has finally arrived, bringing warmer waters our way. And you know what that means. The offshore fishing this season could be one of the best ever. And speaking of best ever, have you seen the new 2015 Ford F-150? It's the most advanced F-150 ever. Ever, which is even more good news for fishermen. One of my favorite features is the available 360 degree camera. It lets you see everything around you, which really comes in handy when you're trying to launch on a crowded dock. It's also the first truck ever to be built with military grade aluminum alloy. That means the new F-150 is up to 700 pounds lighter to accelerate faster and stop quicker. It also hauls more and tows more. And get this, it does it all more fuel efficiently. I highly recommend taking one out for a test drive. The new F-150 is the best thing to happen to fishermen in San Diego since the barbed hook. So stop by your San Diego County Ford dealer today. They'll be glad to hook you up. Hook up! Welcome back to Let's Talk Hook Up on the Mighty 1090. It's going to be a fun show today, man. Yes, it is. Filling in for his son, Mike. We have some guy named Don Hanson. You know Don Hanson? No, but I guess we'll just figure it out. Yeah. You know? Well, come maybe, on. maybe you've seen a, maybe seen a fish or two. We'll, we'll maybe find we should out. call him Mr. Yeah. Hanson. Now. Good morning, Don. Hi, Don. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Pete. Rick. Uh, what, a, what a pleasure to have you in the no studio doubt. here. It's really, really neat. Well, I'm glad I can be here. At, uh, at my age, I'm glad to be anywhere. <laughs> well, you're doing amazing. You are truly doing amazing. And, and Captain Brian Willie, we're here from every Sunday morning. Good morning, hey, Brian. Good morning, guys. Great What's up, to Willie? have you. I mean, this, this guy, you know, you've worked with him for how many years? Jeez, we were just talking. 18, almost 18 years now. Wow. Yeah. And that and that is uh, 
amazing. A lot of the guys at Dana Orr Sport Fishing have been with you for a lot of years, right? Yeah, well, you go back to to George, George's famous hamburgers. You yeah, know, <laughs> 40, 45 years, and uh, Tommy's been there over 30 years. Yeah, it's a, it's a family operation, and uh, most of the people stay there for it. They must be happy. Yeah. So I'm you happy. used to. So impl- Wooly's still a new kid on the block. The that's it. Wooly just got started. He's only yeah. about 18 years. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> you used to employ Frank Lopresti. Yes, uh, I. That you know that was one of my weaker days. <laughs> <laughs> Before the screening process got Frank, going, Frank uh, hasn't really done very well for himself. So I, you know, but, uh, he, he, he drove the boat while I slept, and we had a we had a great time. We made it back every day, so that was good. And was that in Oceanside or Dana Point? It was in Dana Point. Now, okay. I've been in Dana. I've been in Sacramento Pier in 1947 until. And we moved to Dana Point 44 years ago, so we're still there. So you used to operate off the San Clemente off Pier. The San Clemente Pier. That's where wow. uh, Frank. Uh, Showed me how to eat uh, calamari. Wow. Squid. He'd take all the squid out of the bait tank. He didn't realize we're supposed to catch fish with it. He thought we're supposed to eat it. So. <laughs> well, he's Italian. You know, so, yeah. Italian, Italian. They have to eat it. So. Yeah. So when did so when the the harbor was built in what year? Uh, we'll back up 44 years. 44 years. Yeah. And so that's when you moved in and we started moved from Dana Orr Sport Clemente Pier up to there, yes. What, did you, what did you call it when it was at San Clemente Pier? San Clemente Sport Fishing. San Clemente, of course, yeah. And you ran and what types of trips? Oh, we ran half day, three quarter, and uh, charters. And uh, that's basically what the same thing we're doing now is half day, three quarter charters. And we started actually started whale watching off the pier, and then we continued that up to the Dana Point. So we were one of the first on the West Coast to... Uh, Start whale watching. It's been a very successful business for over you know, 55 years now. So it's kind of one of those things people don't realize until they see the incredible display of migratory whales we have here year round. Yeah, it's unbelievable right now with the with the warm water conditions, the El Nino condition. Uh, Tommy uh, saw 25 blues last Thursday. Gee, yeah, blue so whales, the blues. largest creature on earth. Largest creature on earth. With all the feet around uh, the there's minke whales, humpback whales, and all the blue whales in the, in the world out there right now. So Pretty amazing. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. And we just, uh, as you know, we just started the whale watching out of the ocean side. With it. Michael and, uh, and Donna built a brand new catamaran and put it down there. So it just started July 1st. So that'll be a Dana Wharf sport fishing type of operation out of uh, uh, ocean side. Out of ocean side. Yep. Yeah. We're running out of Helgren's, uh, Helgren's office Landing, yeah. and, uh, okay. right there. So. Yeah, yeah. So if new. you want to go, if you're in North San Diego County, you want to take the family away watching right that's there. That's where you go. And that's your operation. That's ours. Yeah, that's, that's very cool. good. So what's been going on in the water, Brian? Gosh, man, where do I start? You know, we got this local tuna fish that's, you know, some days the stuff's two miles in front of the harbor, and you sprinkle in some really good yellowtail fish in, some that's phenomenal calico bass fish. So what do you want to catch right now? You know, it's kind of what it is. That's so cool. You yeah. guys have been like the, the center the epicenter yeah. of all of it, tuna fishing, yellowtail yeah. fishing, dorado fishing. Yeah, I mean, everything, when that, that first big push, that big bluefin showed up, I mean, it was right out in front there. And then now all this other stuff's just starting to kind of filter in. And <clears throat> like like Mr. Hansen said, you know, the amount of feed that's out there right now is what has these fish hung up there. Yeah. There's just huge amounts of anchovy. Yeah. This stuff's on, and it's it's everywhere. That's, it's, that's it's, so cool. It's pretty impressive. And, and a, an impressive show of what that is is on our facebook page this morning i posted it this morning uh our good friend dave pfeiffer the president of shimano took uh jimmy king's mill and and uh great chase yesterday they had a kelp patty 11 miles from dana point 11 miles from close right there and loaded up on yellowtail and then it turned into bluefin they caught 30 pound bluefin and then they landed a couple of 70 pounders That's right great. there Unreal. Good right fish. there 11 miles from dana point and it's been that way. Yesterday, our good friend uh, Jeff from uh, Sedros Adventures got the first, the first marlin of the season. Right there. That's awesome. Right off the domes. Really? So, right yeah. Right yeah. First cool. marlin of the season for his club. Got his That's flag. awesome. So, uh, congratulations to Jeff and, and, and his crew on, on that boat. But that's kind of is it is there a warm water bubble there? Is it just all the feed? Yeah, is there's been there's been a good kind of strip of warm water that's been up the beach there, and it's it's kind of moved in and out, you know, from day to day and whatnot. But if you look at any of the SST pictures, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. There's just been a good little strip of water, and 
You know that bait stacked up on the edge of that stuff, and that's that's where the fish is. The fish is in there and it's happy there, and eating. And happy and eating, exactly. And nice and close Cat- to home. Catalina Island has just been incredible this year. Hasn't it's been it? good, yeah. I mean, yeah. I think a lot of that fish that they were fishing up the beach here at the 150 kind of transitioned over there, and you know they've been on it pretty good. I know the Fury's been over there, and he's had some really good scores on that stuff on his five to five trips. And the famous Rick Dozberg. The Rick Dozberg. Yeah, that's yeah. the man. one and only. <laughs> How long's Rick been yeah. around with you? Uh, a long, long time. A long, long time. <laughs> what a great guy, man. He He's amazing. Guy. He's legendary. He is legendary. One of the things this week that uh, Brian can talk about is the kids' club. Uh, we're taking children fishing on the Clemente for the whole week. They they sign up for a camp, and they've been into the Yellowtail. And <laughs> and it's uh, unbelievable for those little kids. Uh, how many, yeah. how many well, catch? Yeah, the camp, it's, it's like a day camp. It's drop your kid off, and you're on the boat for the day and you pick wow. them up so it's a you know it's it's a week long camp you know five days and the kids had i mean had they got in a good little deal with some yellowtail down the beach and they hung 40 fish and they got five <laughs> you know big bruiser <laughs> you know kelp that yellowtail got five yeah. That's so cool and then they get wow. out to the outside there and you know they catch a few bluefin and you know a couple yellowfin some more yellowtail on kelp another amazing. day at summer camp you know? right just yeah another day at summer camp <laughs> see exactly. a whale see a bl- yeah. the largest creature on earth a blue but, whale like, but most of those children are the yellowtail are bigger than they are i'm so, not sure yeah i mean these are like you know 10 12 13 year old kids that you know are kind of getting into the the whole aspect of you know sport fishing in southern california and for them to to see that kind of stuff is and it's cool. It just good. perpetuates good. Gosh, good for you guys. And what a great way to introduce kids and families to fishing. How does that work? What if we have a parent listening right now go, I want my kid to go do that. Well, how, do they, the, how does that work? It fills up fast. I mean, we have another session coming up the week of the 20th to the 24th, and it, it's full, as you, you can imagine. But uh, just got to be on it early. I mean, I, I don't know. If, they may be taking names already for next year. Just okay. certainly call the, the landing office and you know, inquire, but uh, it fills up super fast. That's yeah, a great bet. idea. It's really fantastic. Oh. And, you know, with all that's going yeah. on with the environmentalists and all that stuff, to get the kids introduced to the real world. I mean, you world. have to. You have to reach down and kind of, you know, yeah. pull from that to, to keep everything rolling in the future for sure. And, and these kids are they're great, great fishermen, and they get it. You know, they have a good respect for the ocean. They, they know what they're doing. Um, it's just it's all around. It's just a good thing. It's a really good thing. Don, you sit at 82, still travel around and work hard for fishing uh, on the Pacific Fisheries Management Council, among other things. What's going on there? Everybody wants to know, what's the story on the bluefin tuna? Well, as you all know, at, at September of last year in Spokane, we passed the rule at, uh, to two bluefin tuna. And it's taken, uh, it's back in Washington, D.C. at uh, NOAA General Council now, the law. And it should be out here in the next uh, two weeks ago. The commercial rule came out, and uh, we hope in the next two to three weeks the recreational rule will come out. It'd be two fish. Uh, I was supposed to be in Ecuador, and I, I didn't go to Ecuador. And uh, the meeting just ended down there. Uh, some of the environmental groups would just assume there would be no take of bluefin to a period. Uh, Pew Foundation, which you know they're strong, they're very strong, and they. So when we get the two fish rule in, I think everybody will be happy. Uh, and we're still trying to find out. And I, I talked to Dave Pfeiffer myself this week about we need to find out if these fish are spawning in the, up here in this area. That uh, Dave got a big fish and Jimmy got a big fish, and we need to find out what the uh, gonads and the eggs look like in those fish because the forty pounders uh, and that we're catching now they don't spawn. No. And so we need to get the big fish and find out if they are. Spawning here. The airplane says he sees them, but uh, the scientists at the Southwest Fishery Science Center, uh, they've got to see more than just what the airplane pictures show. And so it'd be nice if we could prove it uh, that they're here and they're here all the time because, you know, three countries actually fish the bluefin tuna Mexico, U.S., and Japan. And 99% of the fish are caught in Japan, as we all know. So the problem is over there, not here, but. Uh, we pay the blunt of the cost because of where we are. But how do we regulate that fishery in Japan? How can we have control or the Pacific Fisheries Management Council no, or Pacific, the Intertropical Tuna Commission yeah, or I'm, whatever? I'm a commissioner on the Intertropical Tuna Commission, and uh, and you have to reach consensus. Uh, there's 26, 27 countries involved in the process, and I've been to 90 percent of the meetings. Uh, I took over for Mr. Fletcher. Yes. Uh, Mr. Fletcher gave Captain me a very, very nice job of, of taking this job over. 
and I'm trying to give this job away to somebody else right now. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was nice at Dart. You know, Dart's <laughs> 10 years younger than you are, right? And he gives yeah. you that job? He gave me a nice job because yeah. you sit there for t uh, 10 days, two weeks, and uh, you have to reach consensus, and there's no way in the world you're going to reach consensus with 26, 27 different countries. They can't even decide when to take a bathroom break. So, <laughs> Gee, uh, <laughs> who are the worst yeah. violators uh, in country-wise? Uh, uh, under Spain, and uh, you're not going to get me to answer no, that okay. question. Because right. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be yeah. politically yeah. correct. That's right? why you don't reach consensus. Thank you, Pete. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because nobody signals out the guys that are really causing the problems. Yeah, and that's you have to be politically correct and all of that kind of stuff, where you just get nowhere, right? Yeah, that's that's very true. Yeah, indeed. Well, it's it, it's certainly a pleasure having you here on Let's Talk Hookup, and, and I know everybody wants to thank you for all the hard work and efforts and time that you put in. Uh, I know you get paid huge salaries for doing all this. <laughs> yeah, if the price of coffee doesn't go up too much, it's... You know, if coffee prices go up, I get paid more. So, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but as you can hear, we have a great show lined up for you today. Well, you're not kidding. I mean, how lucky are we to, you want to talk about a pool of knowledge to draw from. going to be so much fun and so much to talk about with the great local fishing that's going on. What about great timing having the boys from Dana Wharf on? And if you want to join us this morning, we would love to hear from you because there's going to be a whole lot to talk about. Two ways that you can reach us on Let's Talk Hookup. First way right now is with our local line, which is 858 area code. 457-1090. Again, 858-457-1090. That's our local number. It's open right now. And we do have a toll-free line open and get through because it's going to be a very busy morning. Toll-free, 877-792-1090. One more time, 877-792-1090. Not only are we be talking about all this great fishing, all the great things going on in Dana War Sport Fishing, we've also got a couple of really cool prizes. Two lucky callers at the end of the show today are each going to win a pair of passes. We got a pair of passes for one lucky caller on the half day at a Dana War Sport Fishing, and then another lucky caller is going to win a pair of three quarter day passes at a Dana War Sport wow. Fishing. Very cool prize, and it's going to be, you know, and that's the beauty of Dana Wharf is so many boats and options. I mean, there you might be on the Dana Pride one day, you might be on the Some Fun one day. There's just all kinds of great opportunities up there. So again, a pair of half day passes and a pair of three quarter day passes. If you want to get your shot at winning those great prizes, or better yet, your chance to talk to the man. 858-457-1090 or 877-792-1090. When we come back, we got a lot of Let's Talk Hookup coming your way. You stay tuned. It's Southern California's Sport Fishing Voice. Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. Get it all at Dana Landing in Mission Bay. It's truly the one-stop shop for a great day on the water. Looking for a fishing charter? Dana Landing had you covered with several boats, including the new Blackjack, perfect for two to four anglers, and the impulse that will carry up to six anglers in comfort and style. Dana Landing has a huge tackle shop with everything you need to go fish bay bass, tuna, or marlin, plus expert anglers on staff to help. They even have Mexican and California fishing licenses and reel repair. The deli at Dana Landing is a local's favorite with all the food, ice, and beverages you need. When it comes to freshwater tackle, East County Bait and Tackle is the spot for a great day on the lake. The ultimate in rods and reels, the latest freshwater lures and live bait. ECBT has a staff second to none when it comes to sharing their passion for fishing. ECBT is at the end of the 67 freeway on Mapleview in Lakeside, and Dana Landing is right across from SeaWorld next to the Dana Launch Ramp in Mission Bay. Check DanaLanding.com for more details. For local and long-range fishing, the Islander out of Fisherman's Landing is a favorite among seasoned or novice anglers. But Islander Charters is much more than great fishing. They also do incredible Guadalupe white shark diving trips as well as a schedule of kayak mothership trips. You need to check out the Islander on their website, islander-charters.com. The Islander is San Diego's leader when it comes to two- to five-day fishing. Watch the website for trips and adventures available. Experience the Islander difference. Visit islander-charters.com for all the details. Have you ever imagined casting a fly or a lure on one of the most beautiful and productive rivers in Alaska? At Katmai Lodge, you can catch up to all five species of Pacific salmon. The king, sockeye, chum, pink, and silver salmon, along with rainbow trout, arctic grayling, dolly varden, and other native stream fish. When anglers dream of trophy salmon and trout, the Alagnac River is their destination, and Katmai Lodge is the premier base camp. 
Being the original river-based lodge on the Alagnac gives the facility a leg up on the competition. Both experienced and novice anglers have rated Katmai Lodge and its knowledgeable guides as the best of the best. Katmai Lodge is remote, yet offers all the amenities of a first-class lodge. During your Alaska visit, you'll see amazing wildlife, brown bears, caribou, eagles, moose, otters, and much more. Schedule a day trip on their private de Havilland Otter Float Plane and visit the world-famous Brooks Falls. Book online at katmai.com or call 1-800-330-0326. That's katmai.com or call 1-800-330-0326 for the fishing adventure of a lifetime. When it comes to tackle storage, it's got to be Flambeau with several new products designed just for anglers. Check out the new H2O Soft Tackle System, now available in three sizes, complete with tuftainers, the finest plastic tackle storage containers with Z-Rust, which has proven to be the best protection against rust and corrosion. Flambeau Tackle System's new AZ Tackle System has flexible designs to match your type of fishing. And for travel, protect your rods with a tough bazooka rod carrier. Flambeau, available at Turner's Outdoorsman, Sport Chalet, and other fine tackle retailers. When it comes to fishing rods for saltwater, there's just one name you need to know, Calstar. Take, for example, the Graphiter series. It's a true graphite and fiberglass composite rod, the finest that's ever been built. And for anglers seeking traditional performance, durability, and quality at an affordable price, the Calstar West Coast series of rods and blanks are the ones for you. Their master craftsmen bring decades of rod building experience to every rod they make. So if you want your fishing rods to be truly state-of-the-art, I always recommend Calstar at fine tackle stores everywhere. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. Phones are packing up solid. Everybody wants to talk to the boys. Indeed, and and we have uh, the honor of having the big guy here, the guy that basically kind of almost founded Southern California sport fishing here, and especially there at Dana Wharf Sport Fishing, uh, Mr. Don Hansen and Captain Brian Whaley from Dana Wharf. And if you want to see what we look like in the studio, uh, check out our Instagram. I just posted an Instagram shot in the studio here of uh, all of us in the studio. And uh, again, if you're not uh, on our Instagram, we have uh, it's Let's Talk Hookup radio show on Instagram. Of course, on our Facebook page, we posted that big bluefin picture so this cool. morning. Uh, Let's Talk Hookup radio show on Facebook. An easiest way to get on our social media, uh, Facebook YouTube, Instagram, which are our primary three there, is just go to our website, hookup1090.com, and you just click on the, there's a little bar up on the right top side, and you'll see all the little links that go directly to that social, all the social media websites, you can click right on those on our, on our homepage, hookup1090.com, and get right to all the social media right there. In addition to that, you can also, like uh, Brian always talks about, you can click on that Dana Wharf banner and say, you guys, man, you guys do, are so nice to give away uh, to our listeners, a really superb discount. You know, we try and make it, you know, yeah. we want to come fishing. So yeah. you know, whatever helps get you out on the water, certainly, you know, if that helps you, yeah. take advantage of it. Definitely. Click on that banner and you save uh, 15%, right? Yeah. Yeah, on a half or three-quarter half day or trip. Half or three-quarter day. Yeah. That's really nice. It's great you guys do that, indeed. Well, let's go ahead and jump into those jam-packed phone lines, Rick. You got it, man. Well, why don't we start it off this morning with Dan, who's calling us from Encinitas this morning. Dan, good morning, and thanks for getting us started here on Let's Talk Hookup. Good morning, Dan. Oh, uh, but yeah, speaking of that Islander commercial, I just caught them on Shark Week last night. Yeah, How cool they, is that? they've been on Shark Week. Do they do the yeah, great white shark? Last night, case yeah. dive uh, research. Yeah, and we have got a three-parter. It's a quickie about a uh, half day tuna fishing. Is that a like a shrunken down version of a day? Like you don't anchor, you just chase and drift. Kind of, you don't anchor, right? No, we're not anchoring. We're, you know, a few yeah. miles off the beach, and it's, you know, it's like you would do on a on an all-day trip or an overnight trip. You're just, we're fortunate that that fish is close enough where we can Second legitimately part, get out there. you got there. 50 lines in the water. What's a, maybe you want to switch it up? I mean, I've heard Colt Sniper, uh, Flat Fall, I've never used them. Do you launch them and bring them back, or do you, can you just dump them like a regular yo-yo? I mean, you can fish them a couple different ways. You know, the traditional guys fishing those Flat Falls, just dropping them, you know, taking the reel out of gear and letting it fall down, you know, t- to the fish. Guys are fishing on the slide, too. And the cold sniper, you know, casting it out and, and retrieving. You know, guys just ripping that across the surface have had some, some real good success with those jigs, too. So. And, and number three, are there being a lot of fish lost? Yep. You know, are they seeing a lot of fish and they're just not biting? <laughs> no, there's, I mean, there's, there's good volume of fish. It's, you know, it's a half-day boat, so you get a lot of people that just aren't necessarily prepared, you know. So, yeah, you hang a lot of fish, and unfortunately with, you know, 
numbers of people on board or tackle failure and stuff, you just you do lose, it lose a few fish. What's yeah. the closest this year you've ha- caught tuna from Dana Wharf sport fishing? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Well, our uh, whale watch boat was uh, on a trip, and I know they had a fish. In, I think it was like two miles. <laughs> that is <laughs> two crazy. Miles from the yeah, they that's were on the crazy. dolphin, looking at the dolphin. They got a meter mark and. One of the deckhands made a cast and yeah, he caught a fish. Oh, we don't. That's <laughs> so pretty amazing. On the, on the whale watching trip. Yeah. Usually we try to charge fishing when they see whales, but yeah, it's yeah. kind of difficult to try to tell a whale watcher <laughs> so they have to pay for the dolphin <laughs> and, and, and the tuna they caught. So yeah. yeah. It was you exciting. Get a very up, up close look at a tuna fish. Yeah. They were, they were very coy about even talking about it because uh, they were not supposed to be fishing. <laughs> yeah, they didn't want yeah but he had a license, out, right? right? Yeah. He had a license, but yeah. uh, there's not supposed to be any rods on that boat. So oh, okay. They, I didn't know about it. All right. <laughs> well, you just well, found out. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, just yeah, found yeah. out. We don't talk about it. Then. Yeah, yeah. Well, then it didn't we happen. Tell in that everybody case. in Southern just California about it. Yeah. yeah. Hey, like, thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. That does free up. 858-457-1090. You've been trying to get through. There's your chance to get through this morning. Have a chance to win a pair of three-quarter day trips or a pair of half-day trips going out of Dana War Sport Fishing, one of the finest landings in Southern California. No doubt about that. Tom in San Diego, you're up next on Let's Talk Hookup. Hi, Tom. Good morning. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Tom. Sounds like we, we might have lost Tom? Tom there right right at the beginning. All right, well, appreciate the phone call. How about we jump back in then and talk to Mike? Hello. Mike's calling us from Rosemead. Well, I think we have to- my, Tom. Yeah, I'm sorry. I there pressed he is. the wrong button. All there right. You go. Bye Very bye. good. Well, my question is about uh, the how does the phase affect the bluefin bite. But first, I want to uh, congratulate the captain on serving. And believe me, having served on some uh, uh, committees like that, it's a thankless job at times. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. Yes, and I, I appreciate you. Hopefully you're bringing them some good evidence of the bluefin tuna that the uh, pew people don't want to see. <laughs> well, we hope. We hope. Yeah, yeah. So Anyhow, on, on the, uh, just a second, Tom, while you're on the pew foundation, is it so the pew guys are kind of talking out of both sides of their mouth because the pew guys were telling me that they supported the two-fish limit. Well, they support the two-fish limit, but uh, they wanted more uh, regulations down in uh, Ecuador, and they didn't get them, and so they're... The other side of the way is just stop it all. Don't fish it all. So Yeah. So are they friends or foes? Depends on what day it is. <laughs> okay. So they, they go both ways. Yes. Okay. Roger. Uh, sorry, Tom. I don't I don't I'm not even gonna give them friendly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll leave it at that. So there you go. Well yeah, my question is uh since you're uh, pretty salty, what do you think about the the moon phase affecting the bluefin bite, or, or other fish for that matter? Well, I'm salty, but uh, Brian's in the water all the time, so he can talk about that. <laughs> you know, I, moon phase definitely comes into play. You know, there's you know different ways you can look at it. One, you know, you've got you know feeding that happens that you know might not normally happen with a with a big you know big moon, and then you got you know currents and tides and things that are certainly affected by you know the proximity of the moon. So, you know, I. To be 100% honest with you, I don't fish bluefin like a lot of the guys down the coast do that, you know, are on that stuff every day and that they can pattern the fish and kind of, you know, get it built up, uh, you know. And, but, you know, definitely, it, it certainly 100% comes into play with, with, with all fish, for that matter. You do fish a lot of yellowtail. We fish and a lot does of yellowtail. It, does it ha- does, and white sea bass. Yeah, you know. Does it play into that? I can tell when we were fishing that yellowtail during the, the winter time that, yeah, it, it did. You know, you've got your salooner events and some people swear by that stuff that you've got certain times of the day where the fish are just going to be more active because of the positioning of the sun and the moon and you know the sky and you know we we saw it it would it would bite at certain times when you know when those things were were lined up right and it definitely played into that for there's sure. no there's no question that it has some effect but i guarantee you that everybody here has seen both really good fishing on the moon and really poor fishing on the moon both so, so it's hard to you know it, it, it's certainly not a black and white answer where it means when the moon is full the fish do this because that's just not the case does it have an effect absolutely but that effect sure isn't the same every time it's fish you know and that's the problem and is it they changes don't. yeah they so go know. when you can that's it. always that's, what we that's say a right? good, that is call Absolutely the thing. Hey, thanks a lot for the call this morning. Let's head south down to Rancho Leonero. Mr. John Ireland's on the line from Rancho Leonero. Buenos dias, John. Good morning, Peter. Good morning, Rick. Hi, John. Yes. Good morning. Yeah, we got some good fishing down here. We really uh, kicked in. It was. It's been an interesting week, you know. Real, real good bill fishing. A lot of blue marlin around, striped marlin, mixed with sailfish, and uh, very spread inside and outside the the marlin. Are real close to the beach, a couple miles off to twenty or thirty out. 
and spread both north and south. A lot of billfish around, and we've been catching lots. That's been really good. But the game fish has been a little slower, and uh, and uh, that really what happened this Wednesday is we had a north wind, an unusual north wind, in the middle of summer, and and it really turned the water over. It was a one day event, <clears throat> and dropped the water about four or five degrees, and boy did that impact the fish. And um, just yesterday, the day before yesterday, they really really kicked in. We've got uh, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, yellowfin. Lots and lots of yellowfin off of Veneramus in those stationary schools. It always happens about this, this time of year. You know, there's some under porpoise mixed around there, but there's a heavy concentration of, uh, of uh, yellowfin. Now, they're smaller fish right now, 5 to 11 pounds, but that'll change as well. And they're uh, stationary on sardines and limits literally for everybody. And the good news is that there's a wahoo mixed in with them. Wahoo just came in yesterday in a big way. And I think the average... Uh, it was about two per boat that came in, and they're nice fish, 30 to 60 pound fish, you know, four to six feet long, and, and so we're real happy to see some wahoo mixed in. We had a good bite early in the spring for wahoo, but they've been kind of non-existent, so it's nice to see them back. Rooster fish are much closer to the beach now um, than they were. A lot of 50 to 70 pounders released this week. Very, very good rooster fishing. Like I say, good bill fishing as well. A lot of blue marlin, a lot of nice sails and stripes mixed in. Lots of lots of billfish outside for sure. Overall, really good fishing. Like I say, last few days, it's really really big. Man, sounds yeah, like cool. fun. And what a great time to be in the East Cape. Are there any spots available? If you want to come down, airfares are excellent and a good time to be at Rancho Leonero. Yeah, it is a good time. And you know, we sent out twenty two boats today. I think, nice, like that. Yeah, nice. But uh, but we have openings throughout uh, July and August into September now. So if you want to come down, pretty much. Any week you want to come down, we can fit you in. You uh, you coined that that term for the fish, a stationary school, and that is the perfect word for it. That is the strangest phenomenon it when is. that fish gets in there. I mean, the, you think of tuna as like the last fish in the world, but I mean, it literally, is. you can drive to the X marks the spot and put your bait in. That it's fish is there crazy. day in and day out, and it just it's the it's the strangest thing. thing. It is the strangest thing, and you know, I go around with my with my sonar and, and meter the bottom and everything. The bottom's flat, about the same depth throughout the area and all that that holds the fish you know five or six weeks two months these something fish they like they're very happy there <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's crazy it, I, I, we'll figure it out i agonize over it every year trying to figure out how the heck that happens uh, well tell us how we can find you if we want to book a trip to rancho lane arrow thanks pete it's 800-646-2252 or rancho lane all right thanks john appreciate that report and we'll talk to you next sunday you sure will guys Thank all you. right appreciate that you know if you want to check out the east cape uh we have coming up our 21st annual palma de cortez fall spectacular still a couple of rooms left from 130 dollars a night at palma de cortez That's crazy. for that october 8th through the 12th, it's really a great time of the year down there. Uh, the water's still warm, but the wa- weather cools, and it's just a spectacular time. George Ware Asphalt in Escondido ponied up $1,000 cash for the largest tuna, Dorado, or um, Wahoo, and it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. And it's not a serious tournament. It's just fun, but... If you catch the right fish, you're going to take home $1,000 in cash, courtesy of George Ray Asphalt in Escondido. You can find all the details about that on our trips page, hookup1090.com. Uh, just check out the 21st annual. I'll be there. I can't wait for it. It's going to be a lot of fun. And, of course, it's uh, in memory of our good friend, Mr. Lou Duchesne. Uh, a lot of his uh, family will be down there uh, celebrating his life down there, too. But uh, just come on down. You are invited. Our listeners are all invited to come down and join us. Or you can give directly a call. Call the people at Van Warmer Resorts at 877-777-TUNA. That's the 21st Annual Palmas de Cortez Fall Spectacular, sponsored by George Ware Asphalt with that 1000 bucks in cash. And speaking of the East Cape, check out this week's edition of Western Outdoor News, the front page. What a beautiful that's rooster so cool fish, looking. man. Giant rooster fish, great photo. And that's kind of the stuff you find down in the East Cape there. And uh, they've also got great information on the tuna bite and a lot more. Check it out, this week's edition of Western Outdoor News. Well, hey, we got a little bonus report on the line. we got Captain Steve from the Commander live right now. Good morning, Steve. Morning, guys. How you doing this morning? We're doing hey, great. Good Steve. morning. Hey, we're, uh, we're pretty excited. We're on a, uh, actually on the eclipse this morning, uh, getting ready to run a, a reverse day and a half. Wow. Okay. And, yeah, fish are super close. So this, uh, these reverse day and a half and reverse two and a half and stuff like that, it really, really works out because you get a lot more fishing time, especially when this fish is really, really close like it is right now. 
Yeah. Well, let's explain that. How does that work? When do you guys go so and come back? And we uh, we're leaving here at nine o'clock in the morning, and then since the fish are only you know twelve miles off the beach, we're going to be fishing all day until dark, and then we uh, will probably go in somewhere close to the beach, anchor up, have a nice dinner, maybe catch a couple of calicos, maybe a sea bass. You never know. And then uh, get up first thing in the morning, right around four o'clock, get back out to the ground and fish all day until. You know, two or three come in, and then uh, we'll be ready to go for our next trip. Wow, so you almost get two days of fishing in. Almost two full days of fishing, that's right. Wow, that sounds yeah. like fun. cool. On the day, really and cool. how are you? How often are you going to be doing these, Steve? Um, we're, uh, we're doing our first one right now. We, uh, we kind of just threw it out there since the fishing was so close. We threw it out there to our folks on, uh, on our, our site and, you know, trying to get some feedback, and just everybody jumped right on it. So we might be, as long as this fish stays close, we might be doing a few more. All right, and so how do we get a hold of you if, if we want to go on one of those trips or find out if they're really going? It sounds like a great opportunity. So to get on the uh, to get on the Eclipse and do these uh, reverse trips, um, look, look online at the EclipseSportFishing.com or call us Newport Landing at uh, 619-223-3383 or in, uh, you, uh, look what the uh, Eclipse schedule is like. And uh, also give you guys a little heads up on what the commander's doing. Yeah. The commander's coming, coming down from Long Beach. Uh, I get in. I get off this boat on Thursday morning. I'm gonna run up to Long Beach, grab the boat, and drive it back down. So we'll be online for a long stretch of one day trip starting Friday the 17th, I believe. So wow. next weekend, oh. it's officially on Commander back in San Diego on the tuna at Fisherman's Landing. Yeah. At Fisherman's Landing, uh, doing a string of one days, and uh, we have you know some room for charters if everybody if anybody wants to uh, book a charter with us on the Commander. Give Mark Gillette a call at 619-518-8701. And if you want to uh, get aboard the Commander on any of our open party trips, just look online at fishermanslanding.com or give them a call in the office at 619-221-8500. And like you said, beauty of this fish is it's well within range of a, of a regular one-day trip. Keep the cost Absolutely. down and plenty of fishing time. Absolutely. Fish all day. It, usually on a one-day, you know, depending, you know, you're fishing 60, 70 miles, you're, you're fishing until 2 o'clock, 2.30 at the latest. Fishing so close right now, you can fish all the way until 5 o'clock. So you, can, you know, two or three more hours of fishing time. That's awesome, Steve. Well, it was a great report. Sounds like some certainly some good fishing to be had, nice and close to home. Yeah, definitely. Fisher Biden, it's time to go fishing. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate that from the Commander and the Eclipse. Good luck on your reverse day and a half, and uh, sounds like fun. All right. We'll talk to you later. All right. Appreciate the call this morning. All right. Let's jump right back into those jam-packed phones. Dan in San Diego, you're up next on Let's Talk Hookup. Hi, Dan. Good morning. Great to have you guys and your special guest today. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. So I um, would like to go out and try for a bluefin or a yellowfin on one of the local boats uh, one day or an overnight or a day and a half. And uh, I've got a couple reels, and I'd like to just get your advice on, uh, on line, top shot, leader, and hook. So I've got a Shimano TLD-20 lever drag. It's already got 65-pound Yozuri hybrid. Uh, do I need a top shot? Uh, should I put on a floral leader? And what type hook would you use? Well, that's uh, a a a would be a good reel for your heavy, you know, for your heavier outfit. Maybe a little on the large side for everyday fly line and a bait for bluefin. But if you do get lucky enough to run into that bigger fish, it, it, it'd be perfectly fine. Okay. F- Fifty pound is a good line. That Yozuri hybrid is 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 good line. It's a little on the stiff side that doesn't make yes. it the easiest in the world for casting a bait, but it's perfectly adequate and acceptable for, for what you're doing. And and just like anything, a fluorocarbon leader, y- you never have to have a piece of fluorocarbon to get a bite, but it's also one of those things that as long as your connection is good, is certainly never going to hurt you either. You know, it, it, we caught plenty of fish before we had fluoro, and we'll catch plenty of fish after, but the abrasion resistance is better, and with bluefin having teeth, and traditionally they're a fish that if you're going to get chewed through, it's usually with them maybe more than others. I just I see very little reason not to have a little three foot piece of fluoro at, at the end of your line right now. It's it, the cost isn't so that it's that prohibitive, and and especially for bluefin, they just these things have sharp teeth and they love to get it. Just like Frank was saying yesterday, they're so traditionally those things right at the very end when they're making their last few circles, they just get straight up and down. You see them flare their gill plates and shake their mouth, and they just they cut you off more than other tuna seem to. So I just I know I don't ever see a scenario where that's a bad idea. Brian, you a fluorocarbon fan? Yeah, I use it. You know, yeah, I'm kind of like with Rick though. You know, <laughs> there's plenty of fish caught before fluoro. You know, yeah. Just if you have the heavy line, you know, make, make sure you have plenty of it. But yeah, you certainly can't go wrong with 
with little shot of fluorocarbon by any means. Yeah, yeah especially with those bluefin. I really like that new cigar pink. Yeah, especially for line. yellow, yellow tail. You know, you're you, a Bongo think, Joe pink yeah, fluorocarbon guy. You don't need to tell me. I know. I got you. Tail. I don't think that's you a bad call ever. Fighting it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> hey, thanks a lot for the call this morning. I'm with you, by the way, too. I want to make that clear. I like okay. it, too. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm in. No, I like that strong, line. Yeah. And, hey, boy, it ties great knots. And it's lesser expensive, nice and too. I mean, it's, it's yeah. good. Yeah, it works. I'm with you. I like it. Hey, when we come back, we got a lot more Let's Talk Cookout coming your way. More of your phone calls. Lots of great information. You stay tuned. It's Southern California Sport Fishing Voice. Let's Talk Cookout on the mic. This is Captain Tim Ekstrom from the Long Range Vessel Royal Star. With my partners Randy Toussaint and Brian Sims, we have set the bar for the long range fishing experience. A spring 8 day, summer 5 day, or a fly down, fly back 11 day winter trip, we deliver the highest quality long range voyage you will find. From our premium RSW fish storage to our top of the line chefs and crew, Royal Star distinguishes itself from all others. Want to grab a spot on the Royal Star? Check us out at royalstarsportfishing.com or call Tracy at 619-224-4764. It's time to talk about great gear from Shimano. And when you're talking about the perfect local tuna setup, what do you think, Rick? Well, I mean, just the perfect example is what Dave and, and Jimmy Kingsmill did yesterday when you're fishing for fish that, for the most part, are 30 to 40 pound. You need a reel that's small, that fits in your hand, that fly lines a bait good. But when you have the scenario that's going on right now where your next sardine might be eaten by a 70-pounder or a 150-pounder, you need a reel with the guts to deal with it. For me, I'd pick Talica 12 right now. Talica I think that, 12. that reel small enough that it's easy to cast, easy to handle, fits in your hands, not too big. But should you hook a 100-plus pound fish, you absolutely have a piece of gear that's got more than enough drag and torque and line capacity to, to make sure it goes on the boat and it doesn't become a bummer fish story amongst your buddies. No question about it. And match that with a, a 7-foot Therese rod. I, I'd go with a heavy. Yeah. Yeah, the 7-foot heavy on the Therese. you got a machine that is going to put that bluefin on the boat. Check it out at your local Shimano dealer or check out Shimano.com. This is Greg Stotesbury from AFCO. For over 20 years, AFCO has been known for its traditional fishing shorts. We now will also be known for our new line of next-generation fishing and board shorts. Our new M82 tactical fishing shorts feature quick-dry, high-tech, two-way stretch fabric, zipper fly, six functional pockets plus pliers pocket, sublimated camo print, and our DWR finish so your shorts don't get stained. Also new to the AFCO line are the M25 Stingray board shorts shorts. The Stingray board shorts feature new, quick-dry, four-way mind-stretch fabric, modern zipper fly, two technical high-cargo pockets with inverted zippers, silicone-printed draw cords, along with our DWR finish to repel stains. Both shorts are new to the AFCO line and come in a variety of colors and sizes. These technically advanced fishing and board shorts continue AFCO's long tradition of providing the world's finest fishing and board shorts. Check them out today at Better Shops Everywhere. Good morning, it's Whitney from Mammoth Lakes, California. Come on up, the water's fine, is what the Eastern Sierra is touting. And in Mammoth Lakes, it's much more than just the water. This summer, our four lakes will be stocked with almost 16,000 pounds of healthy fighting trout. From fishing and biking to hiking and horseback riding, there's a legendary story waiting for adventurers of all ages in Mammoth Lakes. Start planning your next adventure at visitmammoth.com. That's visitmammoth.com. XSPRS 1090 AM Rosarito, Baja California. You're listening to the home of the Padres. Oh, right. San Diego's sports leader, the mighty 1090. Welcome back to Let's Talk Cook Up on the Mighty 1090. Hey, it's time to find out what's biting out there. Catch Report today is sponsored in part by Fisherman's Processing in San Diego. The summer fishing is obviously on right now, and that means it is time to call Fisherman's Processing. If you're on a private boat, you've got to get in on that same-day drop-off service. It's very easy to do. Call them before you go and make your arrangements to drop your fish off. Now, that means if it's during their uh, operation hours, which this time of the year are open early and late because of dealing with so much fish, you can just drive right to the dock at Fisherman's Processing and unload your catch. Or if you're coming in after hours, you can basically get a tag and a lock combo to put your fish in an ice slush bin. So even if you're coming in late in the evening when there's nobody around, basically you call Sean or Rosie. They give you the process on how to drop your fish into a secured location, drop it off the Next morning, when you swing by to pick, uh, swing by to work, or maybe you swing by on your way home, all of your fish will be perfectly processed, vacuum packed bags, ready to go for your pickup. The same exact 
treatment that you would receive on a long-range trip. It's so cool that that can be dealt with from your private boat. For more information, check fishermansprocessing.com, or a great way to do it is just to friend them on Facebook. Lots of good info and pictures from Fisherman's Processing there on the Facebook. It's a pretty cool deal. You bet. Again, Brian Woolley's right here in the studio. Yeah, what What's is going, going on, on at Dana Wharf Sport Fishing? <laughs> hey, I can give you a quick, you know, rundown of what we've been doing. You know, just starting with our half day. Um, you know, certainly there, if that opportunity for that tuna is close, that'll that'll be in the cards. But uh, probably they're going to be focusing on the calico bass fishing, and uh, that's been really good right now. Our bait has been phenomenal, really nice sardine, um, and just the bass fishing along the kelp edge has been good. And there's been some really good sign of yellowtail along the edge of the kelp too. I know there's a little batch of kelp down the beach there that's uh, seen some good fish. You know, you kind of set up outside the kelp a little ways and start your chum line, and those fish come up pretty consistently. So. There'll be some of that, too. Uh, Three-quarter day fishing. Imagine it's, we've been starting our days off the beach a little bit, looking for kelps, fishing some yellow like that. Starting to see a little Dorado. We haven't, we've had a fish or two in our accounts, but we're seeing it on the kelps here now, okay. uh, too. So, you know, maybe this week we'll see some of that. And then certainly uh, that tuna fishing is definitely in the cards on the three-quarter day stuff. So you, it depends on, you know, the group of anglers that we have on the boat, if we're going to spend the time outside all day or if we're going to end up in the kelp. So, could go either way, so we're telling our guys come prepared. You yeah. know, maybe bring a bass set up, but certainly don't don't err on the side of light tackle. You know, bring your twenty to forty pound stuff because there there's go. definitely that chance. So. Yeah. Now, Who's Don, you you've you've been around a little bit around Dana Wharf sport fishing, and one of our listeners, Bob, yesterday called and said, "These are the good old days." Would you agree with that? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, sure. Because you, I've seen quite a few things. I've seen it when I went. We carry, I carried 60 people in the morning, 60 people in the afternoon at the half table and caught nothing. And so, you know, I've seen the good days and the bad days. And the Yeah, I mean, it's like front page news was when somebody caught a white sea bass, right? Oh, yeah, and we used to have days where we caught 100 white yeah. sea bass out, uh, down at the barn. And, uh, and it was exciting. And, yeah, I've seen the good and I've seen the bad. And uh, it does cycle, and everybody has to realize it does cycle. And uh, So would you call this an up cycle? I would. You definitely call it. <laughs> <laughs> Very up. Uh, definitely an up cycle. They, you know, they also, uh, Brian didn't say anything about it, but uh, they've been catching the big bonita trolling like the old days outside trolling, trying to catch tuna, and they're catching the, you know, the 10, 12-pound bonita. Nice. So they're, they're around, too. And so, yeah, you know, we, but those days uh, you remember very well when you, you carried 60 people in the morning, 60 in the afternoon, and you, and you settled the jackpot with a tomcat. And so those yeah. were the, those were the down days, and now these are the up days. And this is definitely an up upturn. Time fishing. to take the kids fishing, right? Brian, yeah. you made a good point too about talking about the calico bass fishing and how good it's been. We we easily forget, you know, you, it gets overshadowed when there's tuna that are two miles outside the harbor, but you forget how good that fishing is and having Absolutely. having good bait and having good conditions. You forget how much fun that is, you know. And if there if there wasn't you know, 70-pound bluefin 11 miles outside of Dana Point, we'd be, you know, doing backflips knowing how good and consistent the bass fishing is and lures, but it's it's easy to forget when there's other stuff going on. But there's some really good local fishing to be had right now. It's been good, and it's it's been consistent. The water's been good. You know, we haven't had this west wind that's just, you know, that we've had in years past, too, that have really, you know, done us in. So everything's lined up. The water in our area certainly is, you know, really Dependent on current and you know flushing in and flushing out, and it's certainly that's that that's been happening. So things yeah. have been have been good. So, uh, being the celebrity that you are here on Let's Talk Hookup, uh, giving us a report every week. Major. If somebody wants celebrity. to come fishing with you, uh, you run the Sum Fun. Yep. And what days of the week can they go fishing with you? Well, I'm, I'm off Tuesdays and Sundays, so those Tuesdays are my days off. Um, so you came in here on your day off? Hey, you know, what does a guy. He, team great player. guy. Great Dedicated. guy. Dedicated. <laughs> I drove him down here, though. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I had a chauffeur. <laughs> Boss's gas this morning. That's it. That's yeah. It. But, you know, our boat scheduled. The cool thing about Dana Wharf is, you know, with the fleet that we have is one day we may be chartered, next day, but we really try our best to have open party trips oh, so people can, every can get on a boat every day. Awesome. So yeah. the run rotates from boat to boat, but, uh, you know. Yeah. And just like most of the landing, you just call the landing or you can look online, right? You book online, right online, yeah. Our our online booking is phenomenal. It gives you a rundown of what, yeah. you know, what boats run and what trip, but certainly it does not hurt to call the landing office and ask questions we got capable people that can answer Very those questions capable and, yeah. people. Yeah. when is the san mateo going to start running their wahoo trips yeah that's right I, that's what i'd like to know when uh when the san mateo wahoo trips start up that's it that can get, it might happen well let's go live aboard the pacific queen right now mr drew Carr is on the line good morning drew good morning guys how's it going this morning what's up drew 
Uh, not much. We're heading in from our two and a half day trip. We're getting in a little late here. We we uh, kind of went a little bit farther yesterday. Uh, you know, all of us have been fishing pretty close to home, fishing that beautiful yellow fin and that really nice grade blue fin. And we were up there yes, uh, I guess two days ago now on our first day of our two and a half day trip. And uh, you know, everybody's kind of fishing up there. A lot of a lot of signal. Really good sign of. Uh, fish up there, beautiful grade, but uh, they just weren't really biting that well. We spent the first day up there. We had a really tough trip, slow fishing, and uh, so we we decided to to spread out. Uh, pretty much the whole fleet spread out yesterday, nice. looking for fish. We we went south, guys went west, southwest, and uh, we ended up getting on some fish late yesterday afternoon. And uh, we ended up with 82 yellowfin yesterday afternoon in the last two hours of daylight. And uh, kind of saved our trip and, and put it together late. We were pretty stoked. But uh, what, what made it better was there was guys that got on fish in other areas, you know, just areas that we hadn't checked out because we've been so, you know, so focused on this local fish because there's so much of it here. And uh, there was a couple other boats that made really significant catches on uh, yellowfin tuna. There's some uh, uh, yellowtail on kelps, and not just not small fish, and beautiful gray yellowtail on kelps as well. And so I think uh, here in the next couple of days and weeks, uh, you know, I, I think guys are catching fish already this morning. I think uh, we, we got things a little more figured out, and uh, I think we're going to be having some good days ahead of us. Fantastic Man. news. That is such good That's news. Awesome. And uh, new fish located, and uh, I know your uh, team will be on it as they are uh, right now. So if we want to go on the Pacific Queen, what's your schedule, Drew? Well, we got day and a half trips all week. I, I don't know what we have for availability tonight. We're leaving on one tonight, another day and a half trip. And uh, we'll be right back out there uh, trying to get back on that fish. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's just, I mean, the yellowtail is incredible quality. It's beautiful quality yellowtail. And, and uh, I mean, shoot, I wish we were able to work on that fish a little longer. Like I said, we had 82 in just the last two hours of daylight. But pretty, pretty awesome what's going on. And I, I think uh, we're all, as a fleet, in for some good fishing here. This and, day and uh, a half range, right? Yeah, day and a half range. It's one day fishing, too. I mean, we were... We were at the lower end of things, so we you would have had to be on a day and a half to get to where we were. But the upper end of of where guys were catching fish yesterday was in one day range. So it's and it's pushing up. It's pushing up, so it's going to get closer to home, and it's going to be available for one day guys, day and a half guys, you know, all trips in between. Wow, that's great news, Drew, and good for you guys for pushing out and uh, you know trying to find new area. That's never an easy thing. A short bed is always one thing, but to to drive around an open ocean is, is a whole nother. And to to find and get rewarded is awesome news. Sounds like great fishing. We sure appreciate you keeping us up to date, Drew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was <laughs> it was tricky. I, I I know you guys have been fishing that local stuff, and there's a lot of it there. So it wasn't easy leaving it, but we're stoked we did, and I I think. Uh, you know, the fleet did a good job yesterday of spreading out, and I think we're going to be rewarded for it. So, well, anyway, I just wanted to let you guys know what was going on and uh, have a beautiful morning, and we'll uh, check in uh, next week. And you can book that trip through Fisherman's Landing. Just go right online, fishermanslanding.com, or uh, call the office and uh, book a trip on the Pacific Queen. Thanks, Drew. Appreciate the call this morning. All right, let's continue on with our catch report. Now hit the surf. Our surf guru, Gundy Gunderson, is on the line. Gundy, you know a little thing about Dana Point Harbor. Yeah, yeah, yep, 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 yep. Spent a couple did Gundy, hours inside Did Gundy work for you guys? Everybody's worked for you guys. Everybody has, but uh, <laughs> Gundy was probably the best on the bait receiver we ever had. Uh, it only took a fifth of whiskey to get a scoop of anchovies. Hey, and stuff. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, that's not bad, you know. <laughs> it was a breakfast sandwich, though. That was a breakfast sandwich, yeah. Okay. <laughs> hey, that was some of the funnest days of my life, I'll tell you that. Hey, another week of solid fishing. Uh, Grunion run, kicked up the halibut fishing. Corbina bite hitting full stride. A lot of those little crabs are now big crabs. And for the guys fishing, shark fishing at night, just outstanding. Leopard sharks, seven gill, the whole nine yard, smooth hound, really good fishing. Starting up in Santa Barbara, hook line, sinker reported, excellent halibut bite this week. Lots of stuff working, salted anchovies, 
Uh, that's something you don't see very often, but you, you know, you use a little rock salt and layer some fresh anchovies in a bucket, and they get a little elasticity to them, and they stay on the hook when you're fishing the surf, and they work real good for those halibut. Carolina rig, plastic sand dab, Lucky Craft, all working. Goleta Beach, East Beach, good up there. Fish to double digits, outstanding shark fishing. Wiley's reported good halibut action. Several legal fish reported. Crocodiles were hot there. Cut anchovy working real well. Corbina bite continues real good. And those guys up there uh, must be some small bait in the surf line using little quarter inch crocodiles and hooking the corbina. That's a, that's a little rare, but you can, you match the hatch and if that small bait's around, that's the deal. Just fishing down there in Redonda re, re, uh, reported three striped bass caught out of the surf line there. 22nd Street and Dockweiler, an 18 pounder, a 12 pounder, a 10 pounder. And then on Point Furman, one of the guys fishing the rocks there, throwing swim baits out of 28-pound yellowtail off the rocks. Wow. Unreal, in- dude. I know. It's just, it just goes on, Rock. Uh, big fish <laughs> off Steel Beach reported good Corvina action off Huntington, Bolsa Chica, Surfside. Very good bass fight for the guys there off the jetty at the mouth of Alameda. Catch some tackle reported excellent halibut action, river jetties, the street jetties. Electric grunion, sexy smell uh, were the hot colors there for the lucky craft. And then you saw it in Western Outdoor News this week, 40-pound striped bass taken off the rock jetties there in Newport Beach, six-pound test and a strip of squid oh, and man. a pocket full of good luck, I would say. <laughs> yeah, I would say, Gundy, Gundy that good. is such an awesome report. It's time to go fishing everywhere from the beach, from the rocks, or offshore it's time to go fishing. And, Gundy, we it's sure appreciate your out. great report, and we'll talk to you next Sunday. Hey, I really enjoying the show, guys. Thanks. Yeah, thanks See you, Gundy. Gundy. Take it easy, man. All right, well, that's going to wrap up our catch board again today, sponsored part by Terrafin Sea Surface Temperature Charts. Terrafin Charts give you the latest water conditions, and they help you catch more fish and save fuel by driving right to where the fish are at. Terrafin Charts are helpful all year round to find the best water conditions. And check out the new and improved Terrafin Mobile for your Apple or Android device. Now you can take Terrafin with you everywhere you go, all for the same low price. For more information, go to terrafin.com. And, Willie, I'm sure you're the same way, and I'll bet you if you ask... Just about every person that operates a sport boat, there's not a day that you go fishing where you don't check the tariff and chart beforehand. Absolutely. No yep. question Between about that it. And, and fish dope, you know, checking out the, it's, yeah. Yeah, sure. got to do it. Hey, get ready for our next San Diego County Rive Remote at Dana Landing, not Dana Point, but Dana Landing in Mission Bay, Saturday, August 8th from 7 to 9 a.m. It's our third Shimano San Diego County Ford Dealer Casting Contest. Your chance to qualify for that big prize, the trip for one to Kingfisher Charters in Sitka, Alaska, including a round-trip ticket from San Diego to Sitka on Alaska Airlines, four nights lodging at Kingfisher Charters, three days of fishing and your fish processing too and you can also win a trip on the blackjack their four-pack boat out of dana landing in mission bay shimano rods and reels maui gym gift cards afco clothing package and whether you make the cast or not you're going to have a chance to win all the grand prizes as the winner of the casting contest and then one random drawn at the end of the show will have a chance to win that trip to Kingfisher Charters on Alaska Airlines. And, of course, Gary the Cowboy will be there with lots of great prizes just for showing up. Saturday, August 8th, mark your calendar, 7 to 9, and you can be right there at Dana Landing and have a chance to go to Alaska, for courtesy Alaska Airlines and Kingfisher Charters. And all the rules and the information can be found on the guest page at hookup1090.com. And next Saturday... We have a Shimano Let's Talk Hookup on the Water seminar on the Oceanside 95 that actually still has spots available. I can't believe it. It's being booked through Angler Center in Newport Beach. There's a handful of spots left. So if you want to go next Saturday on one of these great Shimano Let's Talk Hookup on the Water seminars where they supply all the gear. I know I was uh, down there at the Fisherman's Landing yesterday afternoon when the searcher was leaving on our day and a half Shimano Let's Talk Hookup on the Water seminar. And uh, Alex had just a... A whole cart full of, of <laughs> fishing tackle, uh, including all the jigs and everything, cool. uh, flat falls, and every kind of gear you could possibly imagine. Same thing next Saturday, uh, July 18th, a one-day trip out of 
uh, Oceanside on the Oceanside 95. So jump on it. Call Angler Center Newport Beach, 877-254-3183, or just check the trips page at hookup1090.com. And I'm going to bail out of here, let Ricky finish up here. I have to head for Orlando to the ICAST convention. I'll be back next Saturday with all kinds of good information about all the new tackle coming out. But you stay tuned. Lots more Let's Talk Hookup coming your way right here on the Mighty 1090. 22nd Street Landing Sport Fishing in San Pedro is home to LA's finest open party fleet, including overnights on the Freedom, Catalina Freelance on the Pursuit, half day trips on the Monte Carlo, and three quarter day trips on the Native Sun. Plus, you can charter the Ultra, Spectra, and True Line. There is always plenty of free parking and a fully stocked tackle store. Take advantage of the Wednesday specials on the Pursuit in Monte Carlo, and kids fish free with a paid adult on the afternoon half day. 22nd Street Landing Sport Fishing in San Pedro. Call 310-832-8304 or book online at 22ndstreet.com. Many years ago, Baja pioneer Bob Van Warmer found the area he called the Great Fish Trap in the East Cape of Southern Baja and built what is now regarded as the premier East Cape resorts of Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol. Today, following in their father's footsteps, Bob's sons, Bobby, Chucky, and Eddie, have taken Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol to new levels with the largest sport fishing fleet in Mexico, a luxurious spa, and top-of-the-line resort amenities. Van Warmer resorts have become a destination destination for travelers worldwide. But for us, Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol are just a short two-hour flight away. No other tropical fishing destination offers the experience and value that you'll find at Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol. Now you can plan your Baja fishing vacation quick and easy by visiting VanWarmerResorts.com. And when you're ready to book, it's quick and easy. Or simply call 877-777-TUNA for more information. Van Warmer Resorts, the East Cape's finest. Turner's Outdoorsman, Southern California's number one shooting, hunting, and fishing tackle retailer since 1971, is right in your neighborhood. Now 18 stores throughout Southern California and three in San Diego County. Turner's Outdoorsman brings you the best prices and selection, plus a knowledgeable staff that will help make your day on the water or in the field more fun. Stop by your neighborhood, Turner's Outdoorsman. To find the location nearest you, check the web at turners.com and sign up for special deals and more. XFRS 1090 AM Rosarito, Baja California. You're listening to the home of the Padres. Padres are playing some kind of baseball. San Diego's sports leader, the mighty 1090. Information is the key to success, and inside information is even better. When it comes to fishing, inside information is critical, and that's what FishDope.com delivers. FishDope.com really does help you catch more fish and save fuel. FishDope.com is the only SST service with a satellite oceanographic PhD on board, the only fish-finding service with a spotter plane. You get daily catch reports from Point Conception to San Martin Island 365 days a year. FishDope.com boasts the largest largest code group anywhere, covering sport boats, commercial boats, and private boaters. Fishdope.com has online planning tools, moon phase, tides, hot bite icons, and more. What I'm telling you is, if you don't have Fishdope.com, well, good luck. Membership costs less than 40 gallons of gas for the entire year. That's right, one year. What a bargain. Plus, stay tuned for the special code to save $20 on a Fishdope.com membership. Check it out today. Fishdope.com. Catch more fish, burn less fuel. Fisherman's Landing has been the choice of sport fishing anglers for decades with the largest fleet of long-range boats worldwide. Complemented by Southern California's finest charter and open party fleet. Now is the time to book your long-range trips and charters, plus half-day trips aboard the Dolphin. Go to Fisherman'sLanding.com and see trip availability and even book your trip online. Stop by or call Fisherman's Landing in San Diego and book now at Fisherman'sLanding.com. Summer has finally arrived, bringing warmer waters our way. And you know what that means. The Offshore fishing this season could be one of the best ever. And speaking of best ever, have you seen the new 2015 Ford F-150? It's the most advanced F-150 ever, which is even more good news for fishermen. One of my favorite features is the available 360-degree camera. It lets you see everything around you, which really comes in handy when you're trying to launch on a crowded dock. It's also the first truck ever to be built with military-grade aluminum alloy. That means the new F-150 is up to 700 pounds lighter to accelerate faster and stop quicker. It also hauls more and tows more. And get this, it does it all more fuel efficiently. 
I highly recommend taking one out for a test drive. The new F-150 is the best thing to happen to fishermen in San Diego since the barbed hook. So stop by your San Diego County Ford dealer today. They'll be glad to hook you up.